Hi everyone, Jeanette here with Vivo Vintage Designs. If you follow me on Facebook and YouTube, you know that I am an alcohol ink artist and that for the past couple of weeks I've been trying to teach myself how to use watercolors and I've been posting a lot of pictures and I do appreciate all the wonderful comments and the support that I've been receiving. I've also been asked by many for a tutorial on watercolor. But since I'm not that confident yet in my abilities, I don't feel uh, comfortable trying to teach anyone what I've not yet learned myself. However, I thought it might be fun to have you watch me follow someone else's tutorial. And the tutorial that I'm following today is by uh, Nia Niani. And I will add the link to her video in the description box below. So please be sure to take a look at that. And in her tutorial, she painted three little hedgehogs, and I thought they were adorable. My daughter has a hedgehog. His name is Elvis Prickly. And I'm creating this painting as a Valentine's Day card for her. So in Nia's tutorial, she, she explains how to draw the hedgehog, hedgehog very well. Um, the best way that I can describe it is that his body in this particular position is shaped like a fat egg. So he's more narrow at the top and wider at the bottom. And that's the area that I've drawn for, uh, that will be covered in spikes. And for the inner portion of his body, I've drawn two little ears and a little curve in between the ears facing downward. And the top portion is more narrow and widens at the bottom. And at the very bottom, he's got another curve that faces upward. Now I'll go through a quick list of the products that I'm using in my particular painting. I'm using Windsor & Newton. It's a travel palette and it contains 12 colors. It's very inexpensive and I think it's a wonderful palette for a beginner. I'm using Princeton Aqua Elite Brushes, which I just purchased recently in a size 12, 8, and 6. And they are a better quality brush than I began with. But I will also list the brushes that I did begin with, which are Princeton Snap Brushes. And it's a set of four brushes, and they're very affordable. I'm using very inexpensive water paper. It was my first purchase of water paper to practice on. And I think it's perfect for this little painting. Um, I'm using a kneadable eraser, a micron pen, a mechanical pencil, two jars of water, a paper towel, and a gel pen. And all these products will be listed in the description box below, so please do take a look. So now I've drawn the, um, the hedgehog. I've added the little heart like Nia did. And I've used my kneadable eraser, which is my favorite because you can shape it to get into little tight areas and it doesn't leave that residue mess that a regular eraser leaves. And I'm lightening the pencil marks that I've made as a guideline because once you add watercolor over the pencil marks, you can't erase it. And the colors that I'm using to create this little hedgehog are yellow ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and alizarin crimson. And per Nia's explanation, it's best to use different colors to create the spikes around his little body because it adds depth and texture. So you don't just want to use one color, you want to use a few different colors. And those are the three that I chose. Now, to create the color inside of his body, in the inner section of his body, I'm putting down some water, making sure not to get any on the heart. And this is called a wash. So you put the water down on the paper and you make sure that it's not pooling. It's just, you just want to see the paper glisten. And the quality of paper that I'm using is not that great, so the, uh, the water dries very quickly, making me have to work quickly. So I want to make sure that I get a good coat of water on the paper. And the way you can tell if the entire surface that you want to put this wash on has water on it is to hold it to the light and you can see the paper glistening. And that's all you want to see. 
It's just that light glisten. You don't want it to pool on your paper. And now I'm uh, diluting the color on my palette. And I'm just adding a light wash onto the paper. And this process allows the paint to blend very softly without any um, hard lines and just a very smooth coat that blends very nicely. And it's very light. Now, of course, the hardest part for me about watercolor is, well, one of the hardest parts is being patient and allowing the first layer to dry or the layers to dry. For the purpose of this video, I did use a dryer to speed up that process. I thought that watercolor would be easy because I was able to learn how to control alcohol ink, but it is completely different. So now I'm creating the spikes. And again, I'm using yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and burnt umber. And Nia commented that you should paint the spikes in the direction that they would actually grow. And that's really important because even though it's a whimsical painting, you don't want to draw your spikes or rather paint your spikes going all in the same direction. You want them all pointing out in the direction that they would actually grow. And to create these spikes, I use just the very tip of my brush. These brushes have a very nice pointy tip which allowed me the, uh, to just tap it onto the paper and get that spiky effect. I was using a smaller brush, but I know that the uh, larger brush covers more area quickly. So I switched to my size 12, which seems to be one of my favorite sizes. And now I'm adding the second layer of spikes in burnt sienna. And then my last layer will be in the yellow ochre. I'm also making sure to leave some white areas. I don't want it to be completely covered in spikes. Leaving some white areas gives it more depth and more texture. So this is my third and last layer of spikes. Be sure to wait in between um, layers for it to dry because if you add wet on wet, the colors will just blend together. And you want a little bit of definition in these spikes. So it's really important to be patient or use a dryer and make sure that your first layer is dry before you add another layer on top of it. Now I'm just activating the alizarin crimson in my palette by adding more water. And I'm diluting it so that I get a very soft pink. And I'm adding that pink in the center portion of his ears and onto his little paws and feet. Now if you find that the color is too dark, you can always just wet your brush and lift that color while it's still wet. Or you can add a little water and blend it in and soften the color. Now, um, I wanted a, sm a smooth transition between the pink and the color of his body. So I cleaned off my brush and I just have the water on it, but I did dab it on my paper towel so that it's not too wet. And I'm just using the tip of the brush to blend that color into the rest of his body so that I don't have any hard lines. And now I wanted to add a little color. This is what Nia did in her video and I liked the effect. 
she added a little bit of color around his eyes and his mouth. So I wet this, the area around the eyes and mouth and now I'm just using the tip of my brush to add a little bit of the diluted color from my palette around those areas. And I'm letting the color bleed into the water, which again makes a nice smooth and um, transition to the body color. And I'm doing the same around his little paws and feet. I wet the area first, and then I'm dabbing a little bit of that brown color mixture that I have on my palette and I'm letting the color bleed into the water and smoothing it out for a nice clean smooth even transition into the body color. Once that's dry I'm going to uh, paint the heart now and in Nia's video she added the color to the heart after diluting it with some water on her palette and she left some white areas for highlights however I chose to do a color wash for mine so again I'm adding a nice light layer of water to the area making sure that the entire area is covered in water but not too much water. You don't want it to pool. You just want your paper to glisten. So once I have that water down, I'm going to take the very tip of my brush and dip it into that pink color. And I'm going to start dabbing it around the outer part of the heart and letting the color bleed into the water for a nice soft effect. And if you, you don't have to do this, you can just fill it in without doing the color wash like I'm doing. But if you want to um, add a little bit more color, a little bit of shading, you can add more color to an area and then just let it bleed into the water. So I'm just going to fill in my heart. It's almost like tie-dyeing. Every time I do this, that's what comes to mind. The color just balloons into the water and spreads so beautifully. It's one of my favorite effects so far. So now I'm taking my Micron pen to put in his little eyes, two little dots for his eyes and his nose. Nia did not use a Micron pen, she used paint. But I thought this would be just as easy, or rather easier. And now I'm putting in his little tongue using a light pink and the very tip of my pointy brush I've gone ahead and dried it. And now I'm taking the Micron pen, and Nia did not do this either, but I, I thought this would add to the effect that I want to create on my painting. I want it to be cute, soft, and whimsical. So I outlined the heart with a shaky, very light touch. And I'm doing his paws, his feet, and his ears as well. And hedgehogs do have little nails. So I added a couple of little nails to his little toes. And again, I'm using a very shaky line. No hard lines. Keeping it soft and whimsical. I'm outlining the pink around his ears and then the outer portion of his ears as well because I felt that they were blending too much into the spikes and I wanted them to be a little bit more defined. And here I'm just using a white gel pen to add some highlight to his eyes and nose. And that's it. There you have a cute little hedgehog. 
Let me know your thoughts on this video, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend with me, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.